of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for the leadership, management, staff, students, and all stakeholders of the University of Cape Coast. And as we are gathered here today as a university and as a family to listen to our professor, Professor John G. Gatti's achievements, we commit the venue into your hands. We ask for your presence. We commit all functionaries into your hands. We ask that may you function through them. We ask for grace, excellence, and utterance for him. Those on their way coming, may you bring them here safely. We commit the entire program into your hands. We ask that may you make it a success. We thank you for an answered prayer. This we pray in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We shall sing the national anthem. very much kindly take your seats distinguished ladies and gentlemen good afternoon it's a pleasure to welcome you to the inaugural lecture of professor John Gachi Gachi Esquire he is a professor of finance and currently the Dean of the School of Business this afternoon he would be speaking to us on the topic Islamic banking options exploring an inclusive alternative or compliment. My name is Akusia Chiyabiyasaki. I work with the Directorate of Public Affairs and I'm your MC for this afternoon. I have the singular honor of introducing our chairman for this inaugural lecture. Our chair holds a B Farm degree from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and a PhD in Tropical Medicine from Tokyo Women's Medical University. He is a pharmacist and biomedical scientist who has parasitology, supervised undergraduate and postgraduate students, and mentored many lecturers. He is currently the Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. Before I invite our Chair to give his welcome address and also introduce our speaker, I will kindly ask that we rise again and sing the UCC anthem. No, 
rise to your call, you see, see, you see, see, to the call, let us rise to our call, let us rise, where it is no man. You see, see, you see, see, we are the humblest of them all. You see, see. We are the bedrock of our knowledge Being proud of this We students and workers In concession work That your image may be heightened You see, see, you see, see The for rise to your call You see, see, you see, see To the call Let us rise to our call rise Where it was no beast No man You see, see you see, see, the four eyes to your call. You see, see, you see, see, to the call. Let us rise, to our, let us rise, where it is no beast, no man. You see, see, you see, see, we are the kindest of them all. You see, see, you see. We are the brainchild of Enkroma. We train, we mold, and live by his vision to impart over to you that Ghana may be strengthened. You see, see, you see, see, the for eyes to your call. You see, see, you see, see, to the call. Let us rise to our call. Let us rise where it was no Thank you. Kindly resume your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, with a warm round of applause, help me welcome our Vice Chancellor, who is chairing today's inaugural lecture, Professor Johnson Nyakon Bwampong. Professor Mrs. Rusmo Abadu Abohin, Pro Vice Chancellor UCC, Mr. Director Emmanuel Unyame, Registrar UCC, Professor Kwaku Edutrum, Ayim Boache, Vice Chancellor Cape Coast Technical University, Pro Vice Chancellors of Sister Universities present. Registers of Sister Universities present. Professor, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Adorbin, former Vice Chancellor UCC. Professor Nana Obukwajiman, former Vice Chancellor UCC and former Minister of Education. Professor Didi Kupoli, former Vice Chancellor UCC. Professor Joseph Gata Ampia, former Vice Chancellor, UCC. Professor Joshua Osu former Vice Chancellor, Cape Coast Technical University. Professor David Kofi Esuma, former Vice Chancellor, Kofodia Technical Universities. Osabaima Kwesiata, Oman Hin of Ogwa Traditional Area, Nana Kweku Enu, the third, Mare Hin of Ogwa Traditional Area, Nana Nom, Professor John Nelson Boa, former Pro Vice Chancellor, UCC, Professor George K.T. Udru, former Pro Vice Chancellor, UCC, Professor Dora Francis Kedubuando, former Pro Vice Chancellor, UCC, Provost 
deans, directors of academic and administrative units, heads of department and heads of all, members of convocation, staff and students, distinguished invited guests, friends in the media, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. On behalf of the Governor Council, management, staff and students of the University of Cape Coast, I welcome you to, to, to today's Professorial Inaugural Lecture to be delivered by Professor John Gachi, Gachi, Gachi. We wish to extend a hearty welcome to all our special guests, families and friends of Professor Gachi. We say Akwaba and we appreciate your presence and support. Distinguished invited guests within the Academy, Inaugural Lectures provide the occasion for universities to acknowledge the appointment or promotion of academics to the rank of professor, introduce them, and provide them with the opportunity to engage with the university community. An inaugural lecture is therefore a significant milestone in academic career, recognizing promotion to professor. Ladies and gentlemen, these lectures form a key part of the traditions of the University of Cape Coast, where we create the platform to enable our astute professors to showcase to the university-wide audience their research or their perspectives on issues of interest to them. Each lecture provides an opportunity for academics to share, among other things, their achievements in research, innovation, engagement, and teaching activities before an audience of members of the university community and the general public. As you already know, it is the only time an academic gets to profess what he knows or thinks without being questioned. Though Professor Gachi was promoted to the professorial rank in 2020, it is today that he would celebrate this important personal milestone with a broad audience, including members of the public, family, friends, colleagues, both old and new. Professor Gachi will synthesize his scholarship and contribution to knowledge in his field of specialization, which is finance. In the Negra lecture captioned Islamic banking options, exploring an inclusive alternative or complements. Professor Gachi will deliver the lecture in a simplified manner so that individuals who do not belong to the same fold with him would understand what he has come to say. Ladies and gentlemen, before Professor Gachi steps forward to deliver his inaugural lecture, Permit me to read his profile. John Gachi Gachi is a professor of finance and dean of the School of Business Studies at the University of Cape Coast. He comes from the Virgo in the Ketu North municipality of the Volta region. He is a visiting professor of the University of Groningen and participate actively in national economic discussions. He has presented papers at seminars and conferences in the School of Business Studies seminar, seminar series and the Africa Accounting and Finance Conference in Nigeria, Uganda and South Africa. He presented on different topics on Islamic banking at the International Annual Islamic Finance Research Institute of Ghana conferences. He has led the School of Business Studies to become a member of association to advance the collegiate schools of businesses and international accreditation body that gives broader visibility 
and provides opportunities to students and staff. He has been a keynote speaker at different fora organized by the Center for Social Justice, Accra. Kita Secondary School, his alma mater, and University of Applied Sciences in Germany. This notwithstanding, he has delivered lectures on professional ethics in the University of Cape Coast. Academic and professional profile. Professor Gachi started his secondary school education at Keta Secondary School, now Keta Secondary Technical School, where he obtained his general certificate education, GCE Ordinary Level Certificate, that science, in 1993, and General Certificate of Education, Advanced Level, in 1995. In 1997, he was offered admission at the University of Ghana to read Bachelor of Science in Administration with option with accounting option and completed in 2000. In the year 2023, so in the year 2003, he offered he was offered admission to read Master of Science in International Accounting at Gothenburg University, Sweden. He also read Masters of Science in Advanced Finance and at the Gothenburg University. He further obtained a Master of Business Administration MBA in General Management from the Blackinge Institute of Technology, Sweden. In 2014, he obtained PhD in Finance from the Central University of Nicaragua. And in 2011, he obtained a Bachelor of Laws from the University of Ghana Law School. He was later called to bar in 2017. He is a fellow of the Association of Certified Chartered Economists and a Chartered Financial Economist since 2009. He later became a Chartered Petroleum Economist. In 2016, he obtained a certificate in project management from the Crown Agents in the United Kingdom. He has been a member of the Institute of Directors and a member of the Ghana Bar Association since 2017. He is a fellow of the Institute of project management professionals in Ghana. Work profile. After completing his national service, Professor Gache worked with the Gold Limited as an account officer in Accra and later joined the Value Added Tax Service, now of the Ghana Revenue Authority, in 2002. And he worked with the Debt Management and Special Investigation Unit at the Operations Department. Professor Gachi was employed at the University of Cape Coast as a lecturer in 2007 to teach finance and related courses. He was promoted to the rank of Senior Lecturer in 2012 and the rank of Associate Professor in 2016. He was promoted to, to Professor of Finance in, in 2020. Leadership and Administrative Profile. Professor Gachi has been the Dean of School of Business Studies of the University of Cape Coast since August 2019 to date. Before 2019, he was the head of the Department of Finance from August 2016 to July 2019. He has been an academic advisor to undergraduate students and an examination officer for the, for the then Department of Accounting and Finance between 2008 and 2010. In 2010, he was the coordinator for the sandwich program 
for the then Department of Accounting and Finance. Professor Gachi was the coordinator of the MBA Oil and Gas Management from 2014 to 2022. He has served on many statutory committees of the university. He was the best lecturer for the 2015-2016 academic year awarded by the Students Representative Council of the university. He is a member of the African Accounting and Finance Association. He has provided inclusive leadership that creates the environment for the, for the upgrade of all, leading to the needed development of staff and lecturers. He has contributed to reshaping students' internships and making it more organized and relevant. Since two mentorship profile, since 2015, he has mentored several teaching and non-teaching staff within the university ecosystem. He has mentored many students and now at least six students of the six students are pursuing PAD programs. Professor Gachi has helped in the recruitment of several UCC graduates from the School of Business Studies to get employment in the financial industry. He is the leader of the John Gachi Educational Foundation and he has mentored many students and teachers through the John Gachi Foundi Educational Foundation activities over the years. Teaching and Supervision Professor Gachi teaches courses at all levels. Generally, he teaches courses related to finance, law, and oil and gas. Professor Gachi's PhD students have graduated and two more have submitted their work for assessment. He has also supervised 12 MCOM students and 22 MBA students since 2017. Contribution to academic development. Professor Gachi has contributed to the development of the School of Business Studies by providing leadership in the development of relevant programs which are at various stages of consideration by the academic board, including the Doctor of Business Administration, DBA, the Master of Commerce and Master of Science in Custom Administration and related disciplines. He has provided leadership in making available programs of the school to the Ghana military. Extension services. Professor Gachi has examined MPhil and, and PhD theses and promotion documents for both public and private universities in Ghana and abroad. He is a member of the Governing Council of Evangelical Presbyterian University College, who and Jiasikan College of Education at Jiasikan. He was the chair of the jury for the Institute of Financial and Economic Journalists Flamingo Award Panel with sponsorship from the World Bank for 2018 and 2019. He has also served on a number of local and international boards. He has served as a reviewer of the reports, manuals, and general articles of corporate and academic institutions and organizations. In 2017, he was the trainer in the petroleum revenue management to new parliamentarians organized by the Finance Committee of the Parliament and IFEJ in Akosomo. Professor Gachi has shared his views on topical issues 
on the economic management of Ghana on international news channels such as the BBC, Voice of America, Al Jazeera, GW News Channel, and CNBC Africa about his family. Professor Gachi was born in Accra in February 1971 to the late Mr. Kwame Safu Gachi and Madame Janet Abla Nyabedi, but started basic education in the Virgo, in the Volta region. He has five siblings, Victoria, Francis, Foster, Christian, and Edith. He's married to Mercy Dovi, and they have been blessed with three children, Asiye, Akofa, and Bubune. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Chair. This is for your kind attention that this event is live on Facebook, on TV UCC, as well as Weasel TV. To herald the inaugural lecture this afternoon, we have two students, uh, Comfort Mensa, a level 200 BCom finance student, and Elisa Fett Opari, a level 300 BCom management student, to give us a poetry recital. Let's welcome them with a round of applause. Thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, many have questions, questions to question the economy of Ghana. Is it going to recover? They ask. We are told that Islamic financial option can be a force to be recognized with. But Islamic banking option is an inclusive alternative to be explored. Henry Ford said, it is well enough that those, um, that the people of the nation do not understand f um, banking, because if they do, there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Islamic banking. No speculation or gambling deceit. Just ethical dealings making balance complete. Investment aligned with Sharia's decree, bringing, economies, bringing a harmony to economies see. In times of crisis, it stands up as a cure, as a guide. Through Islamic banking, through Islamic banking, all troubles subside. For nations that need economic lifts, its principles ensure a sustainable shift. Let us all embrace this financial art for a better future. Let us take part. Islamic banking, indeed a beacon of hope, guiding nations to prosper and helping them cope. Islamic banking, indeed, indeed. A, beacon. a beacon of hope. hope. Thank, Thank you. you. So it is time. So it's time to listen to the lecture by Professor John Gachi Gatti Esquire. He will be speaking on Islamic banking options, exploring an inclusive alternative or complement. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, let's welcome our speaker.
professor chair permit me to utilize the already uh, established protocols for this lecture thank you before I start I, I wish to extend my gratitude to Professor Jenana Apoku Ajima because my appointment letter was signed by her <laughs> and Professor Didi Kupoli signed my first promotion letter to senior lecturer <laughs> Professor Gatte signed my promotion letter to associate professor <laughs> and Professor John Simbuampo signed my promotion to professor So I thank all of you for gathering here to listen to me. Before I start, it's also important, though there will be time for acknowledgement, to recognize that the former governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Isaheku Nashiru, is in our midst. And the former Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana is also here. Thank you for, for coming. I am speaking on the topic Islamic Banking Options, Exploring an Inclusive Alternative or Complement. My lecture will cover the following areas. General understanding of Islamic banking and finance, history of Islamic banking globally and in Africa, Ghana's dream to introduce Islamic banking, Islamic banking principles and approaches, Islamic contract sukuk, that is Islamic bond, and infrastructure benefit of Islamic banking. Then I will briefly touch on contribution to research and publication. Of course, greater part of the research and publication have been exhibited from Monday to today at the library. So the question some people are asking is that are we promoting Islamic banking to substitute conventional finance and banking? The answer is no. All we are talking about is that we need Islamic banking to complement conventional finance. Conventional finance or banking started so long ago. In fact, in, in 1587, the first conventional bank was, start, was started in Venice uh, and the first central bank under conventional banking started in 1668. So you cannot compare the strength of, the, of Islamic banking today, which started in 1963 in Egypt, to what started in 1587. Then again, the size of Islamic financial assets, that is including banking, capital, uh, market dealings, Islamic microfinance, uh, and the rest, amount to about $2 trillion. And Conventional banking assets, as of 2022, 2022, stand as 183 trillion US dollars. So, if you match that with Islamic banking, you see that number one, Islamic banking is of recent development, and it doesn't have the strength to displace conventional banking. So, all we are talking about is to create an avenue to let Islamic banking contribute its quota while we continue to manage conventional finance. We need to aspire to the benefit or to benefit from alternative models of financing and to diversify infrastructure finance. That is what Islamic banking provides. And create new banking jobs 
and formalize poverty reduction strategies, especially for Zongo communities. And I will touch on that soon. In the past, especially starting from 2012, I have discussed various topics in Islamic banking. The first one was Islamic banking and the role of regulator. So in some countries, it is the regulator who starts the quest to establish Islamic banking and engage in all the stakeholder engagement and uh, ensure that Islamic banking is established. And in some other countries, individuals and groups especially aligned with Islamic faith were the one who started the advocacy role and the central bank takes over and completes the process. Islamic banking and climate change. The principles of Islamic banking uh, such that uh, Islamic banking do not finance activities that are inimical to the environment. They don't finance activities that destroy the environment. Uh, so that is how Islamic banking promotes or ensures that the values of proper uh, environmental uh, activities are undertaken. Islamic banking and economic growth. Various activities of Islamic banking, especially financing infrastructure across board, contribute to the growth of the economy and the particular uh, structure of financing poverty reduction strategies also contribute to economic growth. Islamic banking and financial inclusion. When we open Islamic banking to be added to conventional banking, that is a way of ensuring that we uh, achieve financial inclusion. The Islamic banking will also add its portfolio of financial products and services to conventional banking products and services. And those who are not interested in is, uh, conventional banking will, co will go in for uh, Islamic banking uh, financial product and in that way we are including all in the financial landscape. Islamic banking and public debt management. Uh, this is a thorny issue and the Islamic banking debt management is such that when capital is acquired on the other side, you see the asset that is created by the capital. Uh, we are find ourselves in a situation where we borrow so much, but we can't account so much uh, in terms of the assets that have been created by the debt that have been procured. Uh, we have created a number of uncompleted projects, a number of uh, projects that have been uh, stopped. Uh, as a result of that, normally, uh, by two years' time, when projects are stopped and they are not continued, definitely the cost is either double or triple. And that is the reason why we have seen so many uncompleted projects across the country we cannot complete because of uh, the way we manage debt. And we need to pay attention to how proper debt management uh, is undertaken. Uh, in uh, MENA countries, that is uh, Middle East and North Africa countries, uh, we have seen that the debt to GDP ratio of those countries is average 40%. It's average 40%. In fact, in, 2000 and in 2022, Saudi Arabia recorded 23.8%. Uh, United Arab Emirates, 24.2%. And Algeria, 32%. Egypt is an outlier, 86.6%, 8.8%, and Morocco, 65%. There some will argue that all this country we have oil. But the question is, in Ghana, don't we have oil? In Nigeria, don't we have oil? We have. So it's all about proper debt management. So if we don't manage our debt, uh, we cannot achieve a lot for the country. So we, it's, it's better we get back to proper debt management. Good. Now I want to briefly touch on debt exchange program and debt rethinking. The experiences we went through through the debt exchange program uh, has shown us some lessons that we need to focus on proper debt management. The 
the debt exchange program has actually created negative effect for the banking sector. In fact, we have about nine indigenous banks or local banks. And I can sh I'm, I'm showing you on the board uh, the losses that they incur at the end of 2022. And these are the financial institutions that are meant to finance our SMEs, that are meant to finance economic activities uh, to spare growth in the country. But in 2022, December, GCB, which is another one of the indigenous banks, posted about 555 million losses as a result of the debt exchange program. In fact, uh, if you go to CGB, CBG rider, right, uh, they posted the highest losses of 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion. And for NIB, it's not even reported because uh, NIB has not been reporting its uh, financial statement uh, to the regulator as required by law for some time now. So we need to do something to uh, uh, create strength for our indigenous bank to thrive. And this thing is caused by the debt exchange program. Debt exchange program uh, was occasioned by debt burden was actually occasioned by debt burden. From 2007, we have changed the debt structure of the country, where uh, we have moved away significantly from uh, bilateral debt and multilateral debt, and we have included in the debt structure uh, the euro bond. We have our first euro bond in 2007. Uh, that was about $750 million. And since that time, we continue to go in for uh, Eurobond. The idea is that the Eurobond, when you go in for Eurobond, uh, the bond is structured normally semi-annually. So what that means is that if you are going in for a, a project of two years duration, and you go in for a debt to finance that particular project, it means that by the time you, you, you complete the project, you have paid coupon about four times. And that could burden on the management of those projects. And Islamic banking is not arranged in that way. And that will take away some pressure on the economy when Islamic banking is uh, adopted. So debt management strategy, there should be some rethinking about debt management to include other sources of financing, including Islamic banking, to augment uh, conventional sources of financing uh, project. Naturally, periods of uh, debt crisis are the times that people call for the establishment of Islamic Bank because of uh, its role of no interest, principles of proper management, and principle of ensuring that debt acquired is either near equal to asset created or significant asset created. So Islamic finance deals with Islamic banking, deals with Islamic capital market, deals with uh, Islamic microfinance, deals with Islamic insurance, which we call TACAFO. The aim of Islamic banking is to reduce poverty, is to promote social justice, and less burdensome engagement in project finance. Zakat and corporate finance. Zakat, I will explain Zakat from two levels. Zakat is a requirement for all Muslims to contribute to a fund to cater for the needy and vulnerable in their societies. But I'm discussing Zakat from the perspective of the Islamic banks when they make profit part of the profit is decided by the Sharia Supervisory Board into a fund called Zakat Fund. And that fund will be guided well to direct to fighting or addressing poverty issues in Muslim communities and uh, that will contribute to fighting poverty for the country at large. So that is the perspective with which 
I am discussing uh, zakat. And corporate social responsibility has been with us for some time, where corporate entities uh, factor their corporate social responsibility activities in their corporate uh, uh, plans. Of course, if it is not part of the corporate plans, that is not proper way of undertaking corporate social responsibility. And it also has to be reflected in the budget of the corporate entities. And it, ha it, it has a effect of tax deductibility. What that means is that companies that pay or that pay attention to corporate social res responsibility, the, those amount that they spend uh, will, be, will be reducing the burden of the tax that they pay to the government. And that is why government will have to be uh, very conscious about corporate social responsibility activities in the country. Uh, the idea is that government should ensure policy that will uh, outline part of project and pro uh, uh, programs that will attract uh, corporate entities to direct some of the amount to financing uh, world program activities of government and then they can focus the rest on their communities or their catchment area where they are operating. In that case, there will be optimal and there will be efficiency in managing corporate social responsibility across board in the country. That is the idea about zakat and corporate social responsibility. The World Bank in, is involved in Islamic finance to reduce poverty, to, ensure, to promote financial sector and then development, uh, broaden financial inclusion and build financial sector stability and resilience in countries where Islamic banking is practiced. And one will say, so long as the World Bank is on board, then it's good to go. So long as the IMF is on board, uh, it's good to go. So long as the UN is on board, it's good to go. So we, we have no say. We just have to uh, tap into the benefit of Islamic banking. Islamic banking has some prospects. One is to create new banking products and services. So we are well aware of the financial products and services created by a conventional banking system. Islamic banking will also bring on board additional banking products and services and transactions uh, that are the of, uh, prospect of Islamic banking. Then Islamic banking will help diversify the bond market through sukuk issuance. So we are issuing bonds, but the domestic bond market is not well developed. Uh, we, we raise a lot of capital from the international debt market. And if we allow Islamic banking to operate, Islamic banking will introduce to cook that Islamic bond and that will diversify the bond market uh, in the country. Then restructuring zakat and corporate social responsibility as I explained. The underlying principles of Isla Islamic finance support social inclus inclusive and development promoting activities and have the potential to contribute to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. Islamic finance has contributed to private sector project finance and governmental project finance through the public-private partnership agreement. We have been practicing uh, PPP arrangements uh, over the decades by using PPP policy seat, uh, I mean created at the de uh, department in the Ministry of Finance. But in 2020, we moved forward by enacting a law that will guide and direct PPP activities in the country. Uh, so Islamic banking is well aligned with the tenet of uh, uh, PPP arrangement. And we believe with the introduction of Islamic banking, PPP engagement will be enhanced in the country and we may see more projects coming on board and we may see a, divers, a diversification of infrastructure finance in the country. So you see goal one, no poverty, Islamic banking contribute to financing reduction in poverty. You see infrastructure, 
in, in Gold 10, uh, that definitely is a huge issue in the country. In fact, the World Bank has already estimated that China will be a leader in need of capital to finance infrastructure projects between 2016 to 2030. What that means is that there will be competition for funds for infrastructure development. And I think it is high time as a country we begin to explore uh, Islamic banking options to provide some capital for engagement in, uh, in the provision of infrastructure because North African countries will also be clamoring for the same debt, international debt market and uh, uh, Africa in general will be competing for the same debt market so it is uh, important that we take notice of Islamic banking to provide alternate, some alternative funding sources. So recognition by World Bank, recognition by uh, the IMF, recognition by the UN. In fact, in, 2020, in 2023, a joint report published by the United Nations Development Program UNDP and the Islamic Development Bank on innovation in Islamic finance indicated that Islamic finance offers to deepen financial inclusion, better risk sharing, focus on financing real economic activities, work beyond the requirement of ESG, and contribute to the good of society. ESG is the new development in the business cycles now focusing on environment, um, uh, focusing on environment, uh, social impact, and governance. And uh, finance, um, uh, international financial reporting standard has gone ahead to include it into their standard. Now business schools are teaching it as part of their business models uh, across board. So Islamic banking will do more than what ESG proposes. The report further projected Islamic finance as a better option to financing SMEs and startups and address the sustainable development goal. Startups face a lot of problems because most startups do not have historical record of performance. Therefore, it is very difficult for them to showcase a history to a financial institution to finance their activity. Islamic banking is structured based on joint venture activities, based on partnership activities, based on venture capital activities, which uh, would dare to provide some capital to finance startups and project uh, to finance SMEs in appropriate manner. History of Islamic banking. But some Islamic scholars say Islamic banking is as old as Islam. And some Islamic scholars also indicate that uh, before the 19th century, the trade relation between uh, the Arabs and the Europeans was based on partnership arrangement, which is a key or cardinal principle under Islamic finance, where profit and loss uh, were actually shared. So before the 19th century, they were practicing economic transactions where interest was not part, but the share profit and loss. The first Modi Islamic Bank started in 1963 in Egypt with the introduction of a Midgama local savings bank. And then in 1967, the Nazar Social Bank was established in Egypt. In 1975, the Islamic Development Bank was established in Saudi Arabia to supervise, coordinate activities of Islamic bankings across the world. Then in 1977, we have Islamic Bank introduced in Sudan. And in 1980, the government of uh, Luxembourg uh, established the first Islamic Bank in Luxembourg. And then in 1986, Turkey started Islamic banking. That is to tell you that Islamic banking is a baby when we compare to uh, conventional finance. 
And that is why we are not arguing that Islamic banking is better than conventional banking. That's why we are not arguing that Islamic banking should replace conventional banking. We are only saying Islamic banking should complement conventional finance. Of course, in Africa, Islamic banking started in 1989 in South Africa, and then in 2010, uh, South Africa law was changed, uh, I mean the task law of South Africa was changed to, res uh, I mean to reflect the dealings in the Islamic banking uh, in 2010. In 2018, uh, 2014, Islam, uh, South Africa issued the first Islamic bond, uh, which we call Sukuk. Nigeria started Islamic banking in uh, 2011 and uh, became operationalized in January 2012 and they started issuing the first Sukuk or Islamic bond from 2013. Uh, Islamic bank started in uh, Benin in 2005. So Islamic banks are in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin, I mean throughout West Africa it's only Ghana that is uh, not uh, reintroducing Islamic banks. Now the dream of Ghana to introduce Islamic bank. The desire to introduce Islamic bank started in 2004. Of course, as I said, it was started by advocacy uh, activities by groups aligned with Islamic religion. But that was not long lived. It truncated and then got revived again in 2012. And that also uh, became passive and then became active again from 2016. And from 2016 today, advocacy activities have been going on, led by Islamic Finance Research Institute of Ghana, IFRIC, uh, which have been engaging stakeholders uh, to discuss issues regarding Islamic finance and Islamic banking at conferences, seminars, and public engagement with Muslims and non-Muslims. Then they have also engaged the Bank of Ghana, and I must indicate that sometimes the Bank of Ghana show interest, and other times the Bank of Ghana does not show interest in Islamic banking. Of course, since we are discussing introduction of Islamic banking, the, the thought or the idea is replete among our society. And I must indicate that we have seen uh, in the manifesto of the NDC in 2020 the desire to introduce Islamic banking uh, when they win power, but they didn't win power, so they couldn't <laughs> introduce it. <laughs> so the ball is your court. If you want Islamic banking to come our way, you can think about it. <laughs> well, when we are discussing Islamic banking, there are people who tell us that even the Bible supports Islamic banking. But we will see whether the Bible wholly supports Islamic banking or not. And there are, as a result of that, people do not want to describe Islamic banking as it is. They use derivative names such as ethical banking, alternative banking, interest-free banking, but the thing is Islamic banking. <laughs> so in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 19 to 20, do not change, charge your brother interest on money, food, 
or any other type of loan unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury. Usury is interest. In fact, Islamic scholars will tell you that it's different between usury and interest. They say in usury is excessive interest. But unto their brother, thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord their God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to do in the land without, without thou goest to possess it. So, if the person is not your relations, you can charge interest. So it means this scriptural provision is not for commercial purpose. It's for communal relations. Now let's see what the Bible says in Matthew 25 verse 27. When Jesus gave the talent to the, uh, the, the servant and, and went away. And one person did not uh, trade on the one talent that was given to him. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, exchanges, financial institutions, exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. So this is a recognition that in the general economy at that time it is known that interest was charged. It's known that interest was charged. But the scriptural injunctions that we read was only meant to foster communal relation. And Islamic banking is for profit making, is for profit sharing. So it's different from communal relation building. We have lived in Ghana for some time. Some of us are, are very young. In fact, my seniors were whispering to me when I was there that when they say I completed uh, uh, secondary school in 1993, <laughs> that, was a, that was a time that they had jobs here. <laughs> <laughs> so traditional religions also practice what I read in Deuteronomy. In fact, we don't give money to our neighbors, our families to pay school fees to pay hospital bills and charge interest. We don't do that. Do we? No, we don't do that. So that is not the basis of interest-free financing we're talking about. It is based on uh, profit sharing. So we are in Ghana. We are giving uh, holidays that reflect Islamic religion. We are giving holidays that reflect uh, Christianity. So what is there that we will give that will mean we are promoting Islamic religion? It is not the introduction of Islamic banking that will, pro that will promote Islamic religion because we have recognized Islamic religion. We are giving them uh, 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 holidays. So I don't think Islamic banking is uh, what is going to promote Islamic uh, religion in in Ghana. Of course the resistance that we see uh, in other countries, Nigeria, Uganda, everywhere that is introduced in, in Africa, there is some resistance. Then the resistance is based on social influence and religious affiliation. And religious affiliation. And to curb that, we need to engage uh, stakeholders for them to understand the principles and the purpose for Islamic banking. All we want is to create new banking jobs. All we want is to ensure that we have other means of financing uh, our infrastructure in the country. And as I said, conventional banking or finance see uh, interest as reward for taking risks reward for investment and savings. But Islamic banking see interest as disruptive and burdensome for businesses and households and that it must not be allowed. General prohibitions. Interest is prohibited, is not allowed. 
games of chance are not allowed, like gambling and uh, including sports betting. But I must indicate that online gambling market in Ghana is projected to generate about $57 million in 2024. And the online sport betting projected to generate or to, uh, uh, is value at $30.4 million dollars, uh, projected to be achieved in 2024. The TGM research projects that 41.7% of the Ghanaian population involved in sport betting. <laughs> yes, I'm emphasizing on the point that we need Islamic banking only to complement conventional finance. We are not calling for the, uh, I mean, to abolish all these activities. So we are having a parallel financial arrangement where those who believe that they don't want to participate in sport betting, they don't want to participate in, in gambling, are will continue to operate under the conventional financial system. And those who think that they don't want to participate in these things will, will now have an outlet to participate in financial activities, which we call in financial inclusion and complement to uh, conventional finance. So that again tells you the size of Islamic banking is smaller than the, conventional, the size of conventional uh, economy. But the point we are making is not about the size, but it's about the complement that it provides for conventional finance. Of course, I must indicate that we have started experiencing or we have started seeing some of our students uh, showing signs of not paying school fees because they have used the school fees to participate in online sport betting. We have seen some of our students gone through psychological trauma because they have lost a huge sum of money uh, in participating in online sport betting. That should not be taken away. Then speculations or what is called excessive uncertainty. In fact, in the 70s and 80s, Islamic finance does not allow derivative transactions. But in recent times, derivative transactions have been structured to reflect a uh, profit sharing uh, principle. Therefore, we will see some derivative transactions su such as uh, futures and options uh, being traded under Islamic banking. And also we see uh, over-the-counter derivatives such as forward contracts uh, also reflecting Islamic principle of profit sharing and they are allowed now. In fact, uh, in 1975, I read about uh, a, a finance minister of Indonesia who described uh, derivative as gambling in the financial market. The World Bank, sorry, illegal activities such as environmental destruction in Ghana, we call it Galamse, is not permitted under Islamic uh, banking. And that is why we, I related it to climate uh, change and, uh, uh, and the rest at my initial discussion. Of course, the World Bank cautioned us in 2020 about the amount we are spending to deal with environmental destruction, 6.3 billion. And in, at that time, when you equate it or you compare it to the size of the Ghanaian economy, it's, it will be about 11%. That is huge destruction we are causing. But Islamic fin finance will not permit those things. Alcoholic beverage is not permitted under Islamic finance. But, <laughs> but again, the size of that market will, will give us uh, something close to $2.5 million. So that is why I keep saying that Islamic banking is not to substitute conventional finance. It's only to complement Islamic uh, conventional finance. Yet yeah, it is known that when those who are practicing Islamic faith 
earn interest in jurisdictions that they don't have Islamic banks. They are asked to pay those, ma those monies into charity. But we won't question whether it's been done or not. Especially if you are able to earn interest on your investment about 500,000. I, I don't know whether it's been paid. <laughs> so it's very uh, difficult. So profit and loss sharing will be permitted. Risk sharing and will be encouraged and lending without uh, collateral will be encouraged under Islamic banking and equity investment will be encouraged and will be, there will be active uh, monitoring of investment. And of course, the arrangement of Islamic finance supports uh, SMEs and the rest. That's why it is described as friendly to entrepreneurs and small scale enterprises. So lenders and borrowers will reduce moral hazard, discourage asset liability mismatch, as we see currently going on in the country. We are heavily investing or we are heavily, heavily mobilizing funds from T-bill and financing long-term activities. That has uh, some negative consequences for us if we continue doing so. so and it will encourage moral, invest, moral financing. Degree of financial stability is assured. It will ensure economies of scope. That is talking about uh, the number of uh, financial products and services available. That's uh, described financial uh, economies of scope. Then, less exposed to credit risk as compared to conventional banking. Confusion over section 18. 1R of at 9.30. Banks and specialized deposit taking institutions at 2016 at 9.30. In fact, central bankers, uh, some central bankers hold some views that if you read uh, section 18 1R, there is an introduction of uh, non-interest banking services. And for them, that is enough to allow Islamic banking to operate. But a comprehensive and proper reading of at 930 does not support that position. The reason is, uh, I guess, when financial institutions through their credit policy and concurrence uh, by the, the regulator assess a particular project or assess a particular client, uh, they can wish to grant that client near zero interest or zero interest. And that does not mean an allowance to introduce Islamic banking in the country. Then in section 19, section 19 put restriction on uh, banks to engage in some activities including commercial agriculture uh, or industrial, in that direct industrial activities and uh, immovable property. But these are the areas that Islamic banking will foster uh, collaboration, joint ventures, and uh, raise to cook to finance. So you can say, with, in the presence of this limitation, Islamic banking is allowed under Section 18 of uh, at uh, 930. Then again, Islamic but banking governance is totally different, but, but subject to the general provision of the central bank. Islamic banking. Uh, governance will, prov will provide or will build trust, promote uh, uh, transparency and good of society. Islamic banking governance structure is a subset of the general governance of the central bank. In a secular democracy, there shall be no Sharia court. There shall be a Sharia supervisory board to deal with compliance with Islamic products and services to align with Islamic principles. And these provisions are not in at 930. So you can say that at 930 provide or create a conduit for the establishment of Islamic banking in Ghana. As it is now, at 930 does not encourage the introduction of Islamic banking. <laughs> Then, 
there are some challenges that uh, we need to appreciate under this structure. One, the central bank actually does what we call lender of last resort. When banks are in difficulties, they go to the central bank for liquidity support and other support and pay interest to the central bank. So we need to find a way, if Islamic banking is introduced, how the, the lender of last resort activities will be, will, be, will be extended to Islamic banks in the country. Of course, Nigeria has started, has started Islamic Bank, Sudan, etc. have started Islamic Bank. There are always ways of learning from those who have started before us. Then there is something we call uh, interbank money market activities. Banks I mean, trade among themselves, and it's at, it's at interest. So how will Islamic banks, you know, engage in uh, uh, this money market activity, interbank activities, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to pay interest? So we need to restructure how that is done uh, to reflect control. Uh, by the central bank over Islamic banks so that Islamic banks are not uh, standing alone. Then capacity building is, uh, is a key issue. Uh, we have auditing for Islamic banks, we have financial reporting for Islamic banks. All these things, uh, capital market activities, how they are recorded, etc. We need capacity building in those areas. Then another challenge that I want to highlight is the membership of the Sharia Supervisory Board. Uh, I believe uh, Muslims will have to be uh, very, very accommodating, bearing in mind that we are talking about introduction of Islamic banking in a secular democracy. In a secular democracy, Sharia law will not be, will be, not be a Sharia uh, court will not be present, and how we are going to undertake this thing to ensure that it's a reflective of inclusiveness is uh, very, very important. In some countries, they've been able to bring those Islamic scholars, especially in jurisprudence relating to commerce, and they bring other uh, individuals who are not Muslims, but they understand Islamic finance, to the Sharia uh, board to determine uh, the activities of Islamic banking. So that is what I am proposing uh, for uh, the necessary introduction of Islamic banking. Then we also need to be very careful about lack of uniformity uh, in the application of Islamic law by different Islamic sects. That can also create problems. And so the point is accommodation, accommodation. Then again, we need to uh, do a lot of capacity building for our lawyers, for our judges, for our accountants and the rest. Because when there is a dispute about Islamic banking uh, product and transaction, are we going to Sharia court? No, we, are, we can't create Sharia court under a secular democracy. Therefore, the, the way out is to provide capacity building for judges, lawyers, and court officials so that that can be dealt with. So the implication is, I propose, the, for the introduction of Islamic banking, we need to review or change at 9.30 to reflect Islamic banking activities. I propose we need to change at 10.61, that is about uh, uh, the insurance that is takaful, so that it can reflect the views of Islamic uh, uh, insurance. And the same thing will be uh, called for by, for at 9.29, that deals with the capital market activities to uh, accommodate capital market uh, activities by Islamic finance. Approaches to Islamic banking. We have three approaches. One, pure Islamic banking. Uh, the second one is Islamic banking window and then hybrid Islamic uh, banking approach. The pure one is that when you are established as a bank, you are only established to issue or to deal with Islamic financial products and services. Nothing more, nothing less. But the window, uh, that is when conventional banks are given licenses to deal in Islamic financial products and services. 
And that is why we see banks like S H SBSC, City Groups, Zenith Bank in Nigeria, that is the mother bank in Nigeria, Standing Bank, APSA, uh, Stanchat, etc. already have expertise in that. And if we introduce Islamic banks in Ghana, that uh, is not a difficulty at all in bringing expertise to uh, foster the process. Hybrid means that uh, banks are uh, actually licensed to operate only in Islamic financial products and services, and then some other banks are allowed to go through the, uh, the window. Uh, when Sudan was uh, establishing Islamic banking, oh, sorry, Uganda, they were very clear they were not going in for the hybrid approach. So we should think which approach we should go to. Generally, we have the benefit of uh, attracting uh, foreign direct investment. We have the benefit of financing big uh, infrastructure projects. Uh, we have the benefit of improving socioeconomic activities, increased economic growth and development, increased internally generated funds through taxes, or because all these people uh, will be engaged and pay taxes, increased financial inclusion, and reduced budget deficit and the burden of debt. Now, let me conclude by touching on some of the contracts uh, inherent in Islamic banking. So, we see uh, Musharaka, which is under partnership. We see leasing uh, Mur Murabaha. Then we see uh, Salama. Then we see le uh, leasing that is about Ijara. Then uh, we see agency agreement that is Wakala. Partnership sales agreement focus on manufacturing activities. Then we also see leasing, that is Ijara, and under that we also see the Wakala, which is under agency. Let me now uh, look at this critically. Permit me to use my glass at this point. Yeah, so this is how uh, it looks like. So we have two partners, as I talked about earlier on. So partner one, so this is a kind of a limited partnership. So under limited partnership, one partner is providing uh, the capital or uh, excessively providing the capital, and the other partner is providing less or none. But the other partner is choosing as the manager of the project that they want to undertake. So this is the project. Um, so this is the project here. That's what I'm calling the venture. So when the venture is managed, when the venture is managed, it declares profit or loss. And that profit of, or loss, so if it's a profit, that's the green line. Um, so it is shared, the partner one takes each part and the partner two takes each part. And when loss is declared, then it also shared for the proportion that they agreed before the partnership started. So partner one will take each share of the losses and partner two will also take each share of the losses. So we are saying that Sukuk would diversify the bond market because we don't have Sukuk now. It's not helping in the financing structure of the country. So when that comes in, then additional comes in. So that is the diversification of the bond market in addition to the conventional bond activities. So again, we see an agreement. So you can see the coat of arm of Ghana there. So assuming that is the government of Ghana, government of Ghana will enter into agreement with uh, a special purpose vehicle. And the special purpose vehicle is very important because uh, it's uh, attraction of uh, capital from Sukuk uh, invested has no recourse to the balance sheet of the, of the state. It has recourse to its own balance sheet. So it raised, before the money is raised, the SF, SP, SPV will enter into what we call declaration of, uh, uh, of trust. That is, means that they are going to declare that they are going to ensure that the money raised will finance 
permissible activities under, under Islamic law. Then in addition, they are going to demonstrate that they are going to use the money to finance only the project earmark for the, for the uh, procurement of the, of the, of the chapter, of, of the loan. So that is what we call declaration of trust. And when that happens, then the Sukuk bondholders will now give the money to the SPV and the SPV will direct the money to the project. And the project can be wrote uh, a contract from uh, uh, Takradi to Accra can be real uh, project from Accra to Kumasi and when that project is done and is managed the proceeds uh, will be declared if it's profit then they will share the profit based on the proportion of uh, 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 involvement agree with the bondholders uh, and the rest so that is uh, that then Ijara uh, we believe that Ijara will deepen the property market because uh, there is another conduit to finance uh, property in the country. So first we have the sports market uh, where the property is built, you pay and is delivered to you. But here the bank is serving as the buyer of the property. And you can see an agreement between customers or leases with the bank. So they have signed agreements. And then with that agreement, when the property is delivered, the bank allows the, the customers to pay rent to it. You can see the rent out there. And over time, the property is released to uh, the, the customers. So that is what uh, we're talking about. This only shows uh, how Nigeria has taken advantage of uh, uh, the Sukuk market over time. In fact, I will show you a graph that shows how Nigeria is heavily benefiting from the Sukuk market. Wakala uh, Sukuk structure, again, Wakala means agency. So again, you can see the bank is serving as an agent. You see an agreement between the bank and uh, an SPV, okay? Uh, the bank and SPV. So the, ba the, the, the bank has a relation with the developers, and when uh, the money is raised by the SPV, the money is passed to, uh, to the, the bank, and the bank directs the money through the developers. Developers finish their, their work, and the houses are delivered to the bank, and the bank now uh, uh, delivers the, uh, the, the housing to uh, those who are serving as customers, that the civil servants, etc and the civil servant will be paying uh, uh, lease rentals to the bank and the bank will send the proceeds to uh, the SPV. So that is how it's, uh, uh, it's arranged. Yes, this is the graph I'm talking about. All the yellow shows how Nigeria uh, is uh, heavily benefiting from the Sukuk market, raising different amount of money to finance road projects. In fact, that particular graph is uh, the road project map for Nigeria benefiting from Sukuk transactions. This is just the, the banks that are uh, participating in the process. So as I said earlier on, some of the banks are al already operating in Ghana and uh, if we introduce Islamic banking, uh, expertise can be transferred from their mother banks to, to them to start the process. Yes, this is a project delivery and transparency profile. As I said earlier on, um, as I said earlier on, uh, there is a declaration of uh, trust that the money will be used to finance activities that are not inimical or that do not violate the Islamic principle. Again, the, uh, the money will be used to finance the activities that have been earmarked for the procurement of the, of the money. So at a point in time, they are showcasing what they have done with the money, what they have used the money for. Uh, they are indicating that we told you we will use it for road construction from point A to point B. We have delivered on that. As opposed to what we see in the conventional financial structure, we, we go to the, bo uh, the bond market, we borrow the money, we realize that we, we don't have enough money to do one or two things, then we seize off some of the money to, to that area to finance the activities, the project, 
are locked up, they are, not, they are not completed, and then we keep on paying interest on those loans. That will not happen under Islamic banking or Islamic finance. So infrastructure benefit have been, have been uh, stressed already. So my recommendation, ladies and gentlemen, is the Bank of Ghana to create the environment for adoption of Islamic banking. The government of Ghana should be interested in diversifying uh, sources of fa uh, infrastructure for projects or infrastructure in the country. Uh, again, this would deepen entrepreneurial support in the country, adopt Islamic banking to contribute to meeting the sustainable development goals, and Sharia board should reflect secular democratic values. Contribution. I have contributed to the discipline of finance by teaching finance, oil and gas, quantitative methods and law. I have published 57 journal articles, one book chapter, and, a three, and three books uh, to my credit. The publications cover the areas such as venture capital measures and acquisition, corporate social responsibility, debt structure within the fiscal framework of Ghana. Oil and gas quantitative methods, non-macroeconomic indicators, and minority rights, financial and operating leverage, capital structure of banks and insurance firms. From 2017, my publications focus on the following areas. Corporate governance and institutional structures, remittance and financial inclusion, population growth and energy consumption, monetary policy and governance, credit risk and operational risk, trade liberalization policies and foreign direct investment, soundness of banks, access to credit, and the Wagner hypothesis that focuses on fiscal management of the country. Financial development, digital financial ecosystem, taxation, and dollarization, among others. Professor Chair, thank you very much for giving me audience. for him one more time while the speaker takes his seat. <laughs> Professor Gachi will be back to acknowledge a few individuals who have contributed to his growth to this point. But until then, I'll call on the Department of Music to give us a musical interlude. Patience is the medicine to the world, and a man of patience can receive from the king. We are singing in a way. Thank you very much.
Chikodi ye nye hihe ya mefa chike Moji di tonu to Na chokonu le fya hosi hagbe Na cho honu le fia hosi Agbe fia de Ya ko di mi le hi kya me E ya ta honye donu do ko na du ti Mi bo ji na nyi Mi donu do lo ho tonya we ji bo di la Nu ve fie honye Mi bo ji na nyi mi donu dolo tonya we ji bodi la nu ve vie onye mi va se 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 lo mi bodi dani mi donu dolo tonya we ji bodi la nu ve vie onye Mi bo ji do nyi Mi do nu do lo To nya we ji bo di la Nu ve vie onye Mi va se 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 lo Thank you very much Thank you very much, Department of Music. Let's kindly welcome Professor Gachi to acknowledge a few individuals. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, I wish to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, Mr. Samuel Agbamatu, uh, who was my mathematics teacher uh, at uh, uh, A level. Uh, is he here? What is, what is Ima? Very good, Dr. Emmanuel, yeah. That, that is the son. Uh, I also want to recognize, he's not here, but he called me this morning to wish me well, Mr. Edo. Uh, when we passed common entrance, he was the one uh, who took us to In fact, that time I didn't know Keta, so he has to take us. In fact, is uh, Dr. Adupo here? Is Dr. Adupo here? Yeah, so he took the three of us. Uh, to uh, Keta Secondary School. In fact, by the time we get to Keta, he dropped Dr. Adupo on the way at Anglon Secondary School. So, Mr. Edo, wherever you are, I'm very grateful to you. <laughs> I also want to particularly recognize Mr. Albert Butias. Mr. Albert Butias is here with us. In fact, when I was in the university, I spent all my holidays with him. In fact, he virtually gave me money like a, uh, his boy uh, until I finished my national service and started work. In fact, I need to indicate that it is not possible to recognize everybody here but uh, I, I am very grateful to all of you for coming. Uh, I want to first of all recognize the investing management for giving me the opportunity 
uh, to present my inaugural lecture, the Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, the Registrar, all Provosts, particularly the Provost of the College of Humanities and Legal Studies where I belong. Uh, I recognize the immense contribution by past Provosts, uh, Professor Stephen uh, Kendi, uh, Professor Francisca Dora Edubuando, uh, Professor Amokwando, and my current Provost, Professor Kwame Ose Kwatin. I also want to recognize the immense contribution by the School of Business. I recognize the Vice Dean. I recognize past Dean's Professor Edward Mafoyadom. I also recognize the contribution by Professor uh, in fact, even when he was on retirement, his contribution to uh, our journal has been very, very uh, remarkable. So uh, I recognize that. You know, the Pro VC is a member of the School of Business. <laughs> in fact, the Pro VC happens to be the first person who became a full professor. Uh, in the School of Business before uh, I follow her. Uh, she, uh, she was also at uh, one time advising of the school, so I recognize her contribution, especially in CESED. I also recognize uh, Professor Elizabeth Anampra, a former vice dean of the school, and I, I, I want to thank everybody in the School of Business, the heads of department. Uh, in fact, we have loaned a number of people to uh, various parts of the university from the School of Business. <laughs> uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the Provost of the College of Distance Education. In fact, he has recently agreed to put funds in our lecture theatres for us. <laughs> I want to recognize Professor Daniel Japon, who is uh, the one, the director of uh, DAPCA. We have loaned it to DAPCA. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, we have also loaned Professor uh, Sion uh, Frimpon to uh, uh, code. So I recognize you. I, I recognize lecturers, staff, those working in the dean's office, all the effort you put in place to realize what we are observing today. I recognize Professor uh, Ishmael Mensah, Professor Rebecca Day Mensah, all the teaching assistants, the graduate assistants. I recognize all of you as RC executive, local news executive, Grassack executive. I recognize all of you. Um, then I, I want to particularly recognize, I come from a very wide uh, uh, municipality, so it is very difficult to organize this uh, uh, program and knowing who to invite uh, as a traditional leader and who you shouldn't invite. In fact, when I contacted Togi Ashebo, uh, what he was giving me was too large uh, to be contained in this room. So I have to plead with him uh, before he managed to give me the following. Uh, Togbi Ashiago, the fourth Dufiaga of the traditional area, is in our midst. <laughs> Togbi Atiflam, the third Miafiaga uh, of the traditional area. <laughs> ACP Togbi Age, the fourth. Uh, the chief of Afia de Nigba, Anglo Afia de Nigba. Georgia, the chief of Georgia, sorry, sorry. Okay. Then Togi Jaba, Togi Jaba, the third divisional chief of Devago, my hometown. Then Togi Akamu, the fifth 
Chief of Anglo Afia de Jimba. So now let me finish up. Professor Jema from the NDC headquarters, Accra. And the 2020 flag uh, uh, running mate of, of the flag bearer of the NDC. <laughs> Honorable Dr. Komina Minta Nyaku, MP, Cape Coast North constituency. <laughs> and he still, he still works for, for us. Mauli Hedo banking, uh, I mean who works in the banking landscape uh, in Ghana is also in our midst. <laughs> Dr. Nashiru Isahaku, former governor of the Bank of Ghana. <laughs> Dr. Johnson Isiama, deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana, former. The NDC chairperson for the Central Region uh, is now Miss. Mr. R uh, Richard Asiedu is now Miss. <laughs> In fact, the head of the law cham chamber that I belong to, EBA Law Consult, uh, is now Miss. In the person of Mr. Bright Atoko. The council chairman uh, from uh, Rep of uh, are in our midst. Are they here? Yeah. <laughs> then uh, we have. Uh, some uh, groups who have been promoting Islamic finance uh, in, the cut, in the country, Zakat and Sadaka Trust Fund. Uh, I, I then miss Dr. Ali and your team. <laughs> Rev from the National Imam uh, is in our midst. So we thank you for coming. Professor Awunyo Victor of uh, KNUSC, you are the provost of the College of Agriculture. Thank you for coming. My good friend, Richard, Dr. Richard Akutu from UPSA. Yeah, thank you for coming. The former Vice Chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba, Professor Mauto Avoke. I also want to be grateful to Gabriela Tete for gracing the occasion. Can you? Frida Banini. Frida Banini from. Yes. I cannot call all of you. I only want to say I thank you. Um, I now want to thank my family and I want to thank my family I can see 
lawyer uh, Emmanuel Abuno. We were called to the bar at the same time. Thank you. I want to recognize the presence of my uncle, Sifas Gachi. Yeah. I want to recognize my niece, Dr. Obinin from Ho Technical University. Yes. Nyatefa is following her. Yes, yeah, thank you. Then now I'm going down the lane. I want to recognize my mother. Mm -hmm. I want to recognize my sister, Victoria. Thank you. I want to recognize my sister, um, Edith. Then I want to recognize my in-laws. <laughs> Sevia Dovi. Yes. Raphael. Yes. Then my nieces are there. Um, the Lali Gachi. Yes. Yes. And um, uh, Na uh, Rahi. Raina, Wendy, oh Ruth, <laughs> who is hiding there? So, oh yeah, Sophia, Derek, I, I recognize all of you, and Salom. <laughs> finally, finally, I want to recognize my wife. Down. So my daughter Gloria Asaye Gachi is there. Akofa is not able to come because uh, he's writing exam and um, Bubune is there. I just want to thank all of you uh, for coming. I can't remember all of you. Muta Wakilu, you are welcome. Yes. Uh, we, I cannot forget our landlord, Osa Berima Kusiata IV. The second is in our miss, as usual. And Nana Kutu Enu. Uh, it's also in our midst. Nanamba Eyamba. You are in our midst. I will come and pay something for spell, uh, pronouncing your name wrong. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's do it for our speaker. So we have um, reached a very crucial point in today's ceremony, and that is what we call the robing ceremony. Uh, I'll call on the College of Professors to do us the honors with this particular section of the um, event. Let's welcome them with a round of applause. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I don't feel accepted. Hello, good afternoon. Great, now I feel accepted. Thank you very much. This is a very symbolic exercise. Um, 
It's called the College of Professors. We are just representative. We are very many. And uh, Prof. Gachi would have been the almost the 200th. So we are very many, but a lot of us are taken away by other assignments. The symbolic exercise is that today, most of you have seen Prof. Gachi under the table. Like uh, the, those three virgins who lit the, la uh, the lamp and put under the table. Today we have brought him out and he has presented himself to the general public. Most of you have also seen him on TV making comments on our economy, our finances and all that. Today when you meet him somewhere, yes, I've seen this man. He is an academic, he's a lawyer, a banker, financier, and I'm hoping that one day before he leaves the the, the four walls of University of Cape Coast. Since we are number one in almost everything, we will be seeing an Islamic bank on this campus. <laughs> so, thank you very much. On this note, he is going to unrobe, he will remove this red dress, they will put him, they will rope him with this is it navy blue or sea blue? I don't know. <laughs> but he will put it on later uh, for pictures. But the navy blue is to symbolize that he's being now invited and officially welcomed into the fold of what we call Obenfo, the group of Obenfo. I have forgotten my Ever because we come from the same area. Well, I come from Tajevu, but the Ever in what I would have said about the Professor Gan, I've forgotten. So let's unrobe him, but with your permission, the lecturer's permission, my colleague's permission, and the greatest pleasure on my part to invite my sister from Commander, Honorable Professor Nana. To help rope our candidates. She is my sister from Commander. Even though I come from Tajivu and Nandom. So the Vice Chancellor will assist. Professor Nana, since he, she brought him onto this campus. <laughs> All right. So, you want to start to congratulate him. She will congratulate him and welcome him. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Thank you very much, Professor Kumpoli. Members of the college will now take turns to congratulate Professor Gachi. invite the Registrar of University of Cape Coast to take a stand to congratulate Professor Gachi. I would invite former Vice Chancellor UCC Professor Joseph Gatti Ampia to also take his turn to congratulate Professor Gatti.
Professor Mauto Avoke will take his turn to congratulate Professor Gachi. Professor Dora Francisca Dubuando, former Pro Vice Chancellor UCC, would also take her turn to congratulate Professor Gachi. I'll call on the Central Regional Chairman of the NDC to do us the honors as well as the NDC caucus here to come up and congratulate Professor Gachi, the Regional Chair of the NDC, the Central Regional Chairman of the NDC as well as the NDC caucus here to congratulate Professor Gachi. The NDC caucus here. Please, you have the opportunity now to congratulate Professor Gachi. The Honorable Member of Parliament for Cape Coast North, Dr. Kwam Namin Tanyaku. Honorable Adam, can you take your turn to congratulate? I would invite Dr. Abdul Isahaku, former Governor, Bank of Ghana, and the former Deputy as well, to do us the honors. I would invite the wife and children. Let's welcome them. Let's welcome the wife and children. Exit from my left. Rep from EB Law Consult. If you're here, can you take your turn? EB Law Consult. I would invite UTAG, UTAG, UTAG. <laughs> Executives of UTAG. <laughs> We still have some members of the EB Law Consult taking their turn to congratulate Professor Gatti. Approaching executives of UTAG UCC.
Citation in honor of Professor John Gachi Gachi Esquire. <laughs> we remember, we members of UTAG UCC wish to congratulate, congratulate you as you deliver your inaugural lecture on the topic Islamic Banking Options, Exploring an Inclusive Alternative or Complement. On this day, 29 February 2024, we proudly recognize your hard work that has propelled you to achieve this enviable academic pinnacle. As a professor of finance, we believe that you will continue to train, mentor, and motivate and inspire younger colleagues to reach higher heights in their academic pursuit. Congratulations on your well-deserved success. Thank you very much, UTAG. Executives of UTAG UCC presenting a citation of honor to Professor Gachi. School of Business. School of Business. You take your turn to congratulate Professor Gachi. Professor Gachi is Dean of the School of Business. Citation in honor of Professor John Gachi Gachi Esquire. This citation conveys our sincere congratulations to you for attaining the prestigious rank of a professor in the University of Cape Coast. You were appointed by the University as a lecturer on 15th February 2007 in the then Department of Accounting and Finance. By dint of determination and hard work, you rose through the ranks to a professor, the highest rank in the university in August 2020. You have contributed enormously to the finance and economics landscape of Ghana and the world at large. And the topic for your inaugural lecture, Islamic Banking Options, exploring an inclusive alternative or complement is a true reflection of that. Surely, your lecture will help to heighten the scholarly image of the Department of, F of Finance and the School of Business in the area of finance. Management, staff, and students of the school congratulate you for your role as an educator, administrator, advisor, advocate of students' matters, and exemplary dedication to leadership. The UC School of Business is proud to be associated with your sterling feet and shares in your joy at your inaugural lecture. Once again, accept our warmest congratulations. UCC School of Business, thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. So you kindly present the citation to Prof. There's another one by administrators at the School of Business. They would also present a citation to Professor Gachi. The UCC Association of Business Students would also present a citation. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, School of Business. Now we have 13 former TAs of Professor Gachi 
who equally want to present a citation to him. The 13 TAs of Professor Gachi, former TAs of Professor Gachi, have a citation to present to him. Now, this citation has a personal note from each of them to Prof. So, Prof, you take your time and then you go through each of them. They are personal notes to you, congratulating you on such a feat. 13 TAs, former TAs of Professor Gachi. And they'll be followed by PhD students, 2022 year group. Let's welcome the TAs with their citation. The citation has personal notes on them to Professor Gachi. Individual notes coming from all the TAs to Professor Gachi. PhD, 2022 year group students. Thank you very much. The 2022 year group PhD students would also present a citation to Professor Gachi. Right. Thank you very much, Prof. You. That's another citation. Okay. So this citation is coming from Management of the College of Humanities and Legal Studies to Professor Gachi. Thank you very much. So, Prof, you would exit from my right and shake hands with Nanambe Yaba, the Mahin, Nana Kuikuenu, and then Professor Eisen is on my extreme left, after which you take your seat. You can also take away from Togbeo and Mamao, who are all present here today, and that will be it. Let's do it for Prof Wiles. He's congratulated by Nanamba Iyaba. She's a Kronte Hima of Ogwa, Queen Mother of Efutu. Osabere Makuisata II is the Ogwa Manhin. And Nanaku Kwenu is the Manra Hin of Ogwa. He would proceed to shake hands with Professor Kian Eisen. Professor Emeritus Eisen. We can do it better for Professor Gachi. Thank you very much. I have the pleasure of acknowledging a few more individuals. I believe Professor Gachi has done the chunk of the work already. So I would acknowledge Professor Johnson Yakubwampong, the Vice Chancellor UCC, who chaired this inaugural lecture. We also acknowledge Mr. Jeff Tay Emmanuel Onyame. He is the Registrar UCC. Well, this has been done already, but then since she belongs to us as well, Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman, she is a former Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast. We acknowledge you, ma'am. <laughs> Professor Emeritus K.N. Eisen is also here. He's a former Acting Vice Chancellor of UCC. Professor Domwini Dabere Kumpoli, forgive me, is a former Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast. <laughs> Professor Joseph Gatti Ampia is also a former Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast. 
We duly acknowledge Professor Dora Francisca Dubwando, former Vice Chancellor UCC. <laughs> Professor George K. T. Odru is also a former, a former Pro Vice Chancellor of UCC. Thank you very much. I believe that the rest have been duly acknowledged by Professor Gatti. Help me welcome our Vice Chancellor who chaired the inaugural lecture to give his closing remarks. Today, we have created a platform for Professor Gatte to deliver his inaugural lecture on the topic Islamic banking options, exploring an in inclusive alternative or complement. He has been able to take us through Islamic banking versus conventional banking. And he is not saying that we should replace Islamic bank, bank we should replace conventional banking with Islamic banking. That's not what he's saying. But he's advocating that Islamic banking can be added to the conventional banking in managing our economies. He has shown the characteristics of Islamic banking. And one thing I like about it that with Islamic banking, we are not going to have um, environmental degradation. And one exciting thing is that we are also going to reduce alcohol consumption. <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying that the interest rate is low. Besides, it also helps to reduce poverty and promote social justice. In fact, it is also recognized, Islamic banking is also recognized by World Bank, IMF, and UN. And he, he has given the Bible the history. And he has even quoted Bibles to support the Islamic banking. So it's not something that is bad for the country. He also mentioned that it, it's in somewhere 2012 they tried to start introducing intro, um, Islamic banking, but it has not been established. Maybe it will time, and he thinks that when NDC comes to power, it may be established. <laughs> He also talk about underlying principles of Islamic banking and recommended that Ghana can also bring on board Islamic banking to support the conventional banking. He also showed us his contribution to research and publications, also to the to training, I mean his training of, his contribution in training students and also extension services. So, Professor Gachi, today we have shown you to the world that indeed for Islamic banking, if you want more information, look for Professor Gachi. Thank you. Professor Chair, I would kindly ask that you permit me to acknowledge the College of Professors. Let's do it for them. A round of applause for the College of Professors. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. And also to Mama Ego II, Queen Mother of Georgia, Fiagbaju. Give us a wave. Thank you so much for being here. We'll take the closing prayer. Reverend Dr. Patrick Kwampa will do us the honors. Let's welcome him, please.
Shall we rise as an honor to God even as we take the closing prayer? Shall we pray? Gracious God, we thank you for a very successful program. And as we are about to close the program, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for our professor's achievements and we give you all the glory we thank you for the lives of all the dignitaries that grace this occasion we thank you for the lives of all the functionaries that performed to make this program a success we commit our departure into your hands and may you continue to bless the entire university we thank you for an answered prayer. This we pray in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and all the time throughout your life give you peace. Amen. Thank you very much. We shall remain standing for the Vice Chancellor's recession, after which we'll have a photo session out of this auditorium. Thank you very much. Our dignitaries will follow, Nananong will follow, Tobeo Mamao would also follow.